came from Gomandiaro Congo and the earliest brand of bike which I can remember was called TVS. Today it's 2023. One of the brand which is overtaking the whole African continent for bikes is Bajaj. And these two are Indian companies. So they are not the only one in the market. There's so many other Chinese companies trying to do the same. How did these Indian brands succeed to overtake the whole African market and especially to a brand like Bajaj? So let me give you a bit of history. This started way long before I was even born. In time when Africa is just trying to get industrialized, they need means of transport to commute from places to others. And apparently, because of the difficulty of road, bikes became one of the best ways which they could use to move from one city to another. And the demand of bikes was increasing, and that's when the market from outside had to come in Africa. But the first ones to come were the Japanese, and this was because of the quality which they needed because the roads weren't that good, and they needed bikes which could sustain such roads. And unfortunately, the Japanese bikes were too costly comparatively to the African population. And that's when the Chinese got the idea of stepping in. And unfortunately, it didn't work well with the Chinese companies because they had less quality and they were affordable, which also couldn't work because they couldn't just use their money to buy a bike which they could use in a year or two and then replace it again. And that's when the Indians came out with a much better method, which was supplying a Japanese kind quality with a Chinese kind price, which means they just brought high quality for lower price in Africa. And that's what works well for the African population because even up until now, most don't have really good quality roads. So bikes work as an easiest way of commuting from one city to another, from one place to another. And today it's 2023. From what I saw, the Bajaj and TVS companies are among the top two in most countries when it comes to the bikes which are being used in those countries. And for a company like Bajaj, they are not only the ones who are leaders when it comes to bikes, but they also supply another method of transport which became also somehow common in so many African countries is the auto. I saw them in Burundi, they're in so many other countries also in Africa. They are also literally from India. The question of how did these guys manage to catch Africa is not only from the quality of the products which they were giving to the people, despite the people not being rich, but also the availability of more species which have to be exchanged in case of repairing and also their representative in so many African countries. So what they did is that they don't take bikes which are fully done in India, they take pieces to so many other representatives in Africa which have to be assembled and then sold in those countries. Which I think is a way which works far better by them trying to understand the exact need of the people and then manufacturing bikes which work exactly according to the African people and according to their roads. Because those types of bikes which you find in Africa, as for example Boxer, it's one of the most popular. You can't find it any other place aside from African countries. Which I think the neutral meaning of that is that they really understood how the African roads are and how they can supply something of quality at a cheaper price in Africa. And that's how they won the market. Thanks so much for being here. Catch you next time.